Are you ready with all your ingredients? So let's go through the list of ingredients okay. so we make sure we've got everything. The ingredients that we need for our cupcakes. Um, uh, so I've butter. got these ingredients this here. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to have butter or margarine. And I'll say we're cheating here. We're using margarine because it's easier. Yes, yeah. um, caster sugar, two eggs, a little bit of vanilla extract, some self-raising flour and a dash of milk. Um, and then we've also done some beautiful buttercream icing where we used butter, icing sugar, again a little bit of milk and we had some chocolate buttons and raspberries that we have decorated them with. So decorations can be anything you've got in the house, it doesn't have to be what we've used. Let us start. So, the first instruction I've got is to heat the oven 160 degrees. If it's a gas, gas mark four, and I don't have a Fahrenheit temperature, so I can't tell you that one. And Aisha's already done that. The oven was nice and hot because it's a little bit peculiar. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the next thing it says is we've got to fill our cupcake tray with 12 cases and Aisha has been really organised so if you just bring that over. So we've got a, a cupcake tray which has the indentations and we have got 12 white, white paper cases in it. And that's all ready to go so we'll give you a little bit of time if, uh, to let you pop them in. So Aisha, slow down a little bit. <laughs> I'm just getting them ready. So our next instruction, I'll read it out whilst you're popping some cases in, is you, it says using an electric whisk, you need to beat the 100 grams of butter and the sorry, 110 grams of butter and 110 grams of caster sugar together until they're pale and fluffy. So Aisha's just going to measure out her butter and sugar. So it's 110 grams of butter and 110 grams of sugar. The beep was putting the scales on. Do my okay, so Aisha's just popping it in, and don't worry if you don't get it right the first time, you can always take some out or put some more yeah, butter in. Just so, as I said, we've been cheating and we're using margarine because it's a little bit easier. You could, if you wanted to, do this by hand. And when I bake cakes, I, I like to cook. I like to beat my um, cream, my sugar and butter together by hand. So I'm old school. It takes a lot longer, but it gives you nice strong arms by the end of it. <laughs> so I should just making sure she tidies up as she goes along. She's yes. got a plate at the front here to put her um, yeah. implements on so that they don't get the surface dirty. She's using the same scale she used for the butter without cleaning it out for the sugar because it's all going to be mixed together. There we are, and again, you can always take some out or put some more in, so don't worry if it takes you a little bit of time. So Aisha's, Aisha's doing the very, uh, very good cook thing of just pouring in and going, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> Sugar into the so she just poured the sugar into the butter. She's using a wooden spoon to scoop it out of the um, scales bowl. We've got a lovely metal scales bowl. And then she's scraping off the excess butter and sugar from her spoon. And just sort of a little bit of a make sure it's not on the sides. And we are going to use a hand whisk. But as I said, you could do it with a wooden spoon yourself. Um, and it's going to get a bit loud, so you may not be able to hear me. But Aisha's just mixing, she's moving the whisk around within the bowl rather than holding it in one place and making sure that all of the sugar and all of the butter is mixed together. So I'm just going to keep, take a little bit of a peek so I can see what it looks like. It's getting much lighter and it looks nice and fluffy. Keep going for a little bit more. And there we are, ours is all mixed. We'll give you a little bit of time so you can... 
catch up with us in the middle yeah just to get the sides in so Aisha's just stopped her mixing for now she's scooping the sides into the middle so that we don't miss any of it and make sure it's all mixed properly yeah. and again anytime you use make sure you scoop off your batter so that it's in the middle rather than on your implements <laughs> let's do a little bit more mixing again And again, same thing, moving the whisk around rather than keeping it in one place. Um, Aisha, can you feel, does it feel different? Sorry. Aisha, does it feel different as it gets more as airy? It gets, as it gets lighter, it feels different. Feel the... So is it easier to move it through? Yeah, it's okay. easier to move it, yeah. Okay, so as it gets lighter, just make sure that you are, you can feel the difference. It should feel easier to move the whisk around rather than that it's against something. And again, if you're doing this by hand, you'd still be going. It still wouldn't be fluffy, but it is doable. <laughs> and it's got a really, really pale white now, rather than a yellowish colour that it was before. Okay, so Aisha has... Have you finished that stage? Do you want the no, next instruction? No, I'm just going to... Oh. Again, and then one more whisk. Ah, so Aisha's just scooping it back into the middle again, and she says she's going to do one more whisk. So again, making sure that whenever you do this, you don't leave much on your implements that you are scraping with, otherwise you're losing the ingredients. Yeah. And if you do make cupcakes, please send us some photos. If you're making them today, we want some pictures of you doing it today. If you make them another day, please send them in of whatever you've managed to pop on top of them. So. I should turn the whisk up to a higher speed this time. So she was whisking it on a low speed throughout all of it and just at the end she turned it up to, I think, a medium rather than the full high one. And she's moving the whisk faster now than she was when it was on a slower speed. really really pale now right so my next ingredient says we have to whisk two large eggs whisk in two mm. large eggs one at a time now I'm using the eggs so Aisha are you a very good cook do you put them straight in your bowl um, <laughs> no I'll be warm at the time so if you're worried about shell you can always put them into I another put thing them first. In the yeah. But Aisha, she, she does this all the time, so she's going to pop it straight in. Yeah. She's using the back of the knife to crack the egg. Um, if you've got the right width bowl, you can use the side of the bowl, but a back of the knife gives you a bit more control. And she popped it in whole, not worrying if the yolk broke or not, because we're about to whisk it, so it doesn't matter at all. Whisking it now, so, the first egg. Yeah, whisking the first egg. And we're back on the slow speed again. Again, you could do this by hand. And at this point, if you're doing it by hand, you can use as much force as you want because you're putting air into the mixture. Oh, we've gone up to a medium speed now. And then off. So now obviously that one's fully mixed in. And we're going to pop the second egg in now. <laughs> Remember cracking it with the back of the knife, not the front of the knife, because that's the sharp bit. <laughs> and popping the egg in. Um, if your mixture starts to separate at this point, you can put in a little bit of flour, and that will help it not separate. There's a baking tip. <laughs> So I just, just as she stops, she's scraping off the mixture from the side again to bring it into the middle. 
Yes, Maxine, it's a very good workout if you're doing it all by hand. <laughs> right. Second okay. Egg. Yeah, second egg in again on the low speed. Making sure that we're not stopping moving. There we are. So when Aisha puts her whisk down, it stands on the back, which means it is easy. She's just leaving the beaters hanging over the bowl so that anything that drips off drips back into the bowl rather than on your surface for an easy clean-up. She brought everything back into the middle again and is scraping off the back of the spoon. And the next instruction says we have to add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Um, if you've got a different type of vanilla, it might be a slightly different amount. So if you have essence, it will be a different amount to extract. Um, so, and I was using a real teaspoon that you use to make your tea, not a measuring <coughs> spoon. You don't have to have a teaspoon. So that's half a teaspoon of yeah. vanilla extract. I always find you can be a little bit heavy on your vanilla extract and they still taste very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Aisha's clearing up as she goes along, she's popping everything into the sink so it's not making her have a messy workspace. It makes it easy for the clear up. Hands. And she's just gone to wash her hands because they're a little bit vanilla -y, I'm guessing. <laughs> So the next thing Aisha will be doing is measuring out her 110 grams of self-raising flour. And because it's self-raising flour, we don't need an additional raising agent. Um, I'm just going to put the scale on. Yeah, so Aisha's popping the scale on. I, I'm always wary of my cakes not rising, so I tend to add my raising agent as well as a little bit of self-raising flour. Yeah. But it <laughs> doesn't so, matter if you do or don't. 110 grams. Yeah, so 110 grams again, so really easy recipe to remember. It's 110 grams of everything and two eggs. I think in old money that's about four ounces of everything and two eggs. So Aisha's just pouring a little bit in, waiting for the scales, pouring a little bit for the scales. Uh, one of the pieces of tech we're going to be talking about are the talking scales, so I will demonstrate how that works later. There we are. And Aisha got it right first time. Isn't she a star? <laughs> yeah, that's my 110 grams. But don't worry if you did. And then I'm just... Okay. She's going to pop the flour in. So you can just pop all your flour in in one go. And make sure you've got it all out. Side now. Yep, so I just turning off, the scale yep, now. turning off the scales and putting them over to one side so they are out of the way because we won't need them again because, yeah. well, won't need them again until after the cooking's done. Yeah. Right, so, <laughs> so back onto the mixer, turning it back on on a nice slow speed so we don't have a poof of flour going everywhere. Yeah. Still had a little bit because that's what flour does. <laughs> And as it's mixing, it's going back to that sort of creamy colour rather than the bright white from the flour. It's still quite a soft mixture, so it's moving quite smoothly through it. There we are. And I think she's... Aisha, oh, ah, yep, Aisha's going to bring all the mixture down from the side of the bowl. I'm getting the hang of this cooking. <laughs> and we'll be putting it into the middle just to make sure all that flour we popped in gets uh, measured out. Yeah. Uh, not whisked in, sorry. All the flour we measured out gets whisked in. Just getting it off the spoon now and then I'll whisk again. Um, Anna Marie, if you're um, using... Okay. <laughs> okay, they can't whisk. Right, second whisk. Okay, brilliant, and then whisking again. There we are, and I... So it's getting a little bit 
sticker. It's starting to form little peaks inside. But how does it feel now, Aisha? Light. It feels light. light. Okay. Light and fluffy. <laughs> Okay, and that must be about right. Okay, so that's all our ingredients are in and it's all mixed really well. So the next thing we have to do is we have to just spoon it into the cupcake cases. Um, the trick with this is to get your cupcake cases as close to your bowl as possible so you're not carrying it too far. And if you use a smaller spoon, you can always put two spoonfuls in. So I just gone straight for a dessert spoon. I always use a teaspoon because I'm petrified of getting it everywhere and it being a mess. <laughs> yeah, so I should just taken her beaters out so they're not over the bowl to make it a little bit easier. Just getting off the excess mixture of the bowl. Of the... Yeah. And popping a beater straight into the sink, ready for next. the next usage. Well, ready for washing them up. Right, just pulling it inside. Take so, yeah. Excess. Yep, I should bring right. it all into the middle so it's all nice and easy. Yeah, so now I'm going to start spawning it. So she's tilted the bowl up to get a nice scoop from the side. Yeah, I'm using another spoon just to yep. make it a little bit She's made bit one easier. spoonful full. Spoonful. And she's using a second spoon to just scoop it scoop off of the spoon off, and yeah. into the middle of the cupcake case. Yeah. So that way it doesn't go everywhere. Yep. And don't worry about trying to get it even on the top. <laughs> Pop it in as it cooks, they'll even out. They'll even out, yeah. So Aisha's got a nice peak on her first one. <laughs> there we are. And it's the second one gone in. So she started with the one closest to her because... That's the easiest one to do, and you get a nice feeling of satisfaction doing that first one. Yeah. And then you move further away, where it gets a little bit more difficult. <coughs> well, that's three we've done. I'm, I'm getting very hungry now. I can't wait for the taste test portion. So it's about one dessert spoon that Aisha's putting in each cakes, case. We've got small fairy cake cases. If you've got bigger muffin cases, you'll need a bit more. It fills up about, uh, it will it'll fill eight, uh, sorry, it'll make 12 ca um, cupcakes of the little ones. And it is filling about 80% of the case. <clears throat> I always think put, put a little bit in, yeah. you can always go back and put a little and bit more in. Bit more, yeah. It's much more difficult to take it out. Yeah. <laughs> now I just halfway across the um, tray, and if I was doing it, I would have spun the tray around at this point just to make it easier and I didn't have to carry it as far. <laughs> well, Aisha is fine. <laughs> but Aisha's very skilled at this. <laughs> Done nine, got three more to yep, do. just the three more to do. And then. Oh, the most difficult one down the furthest away. Yeah. And then oh. two more. Oh. Um, if, the, if people are using plain flour and they are going to um, bake, what would be the amount of baking powder they should use? One teaspoon. Okay, yeah. Okay, and one more to fill up. One more, and then... Ah, so Aisha's now at the point where she's scraping the last bits out of the bowl, which means she yeah. used just the right amount in every cupcake case. Yeah. <laughs> See, like we said earlier, it's always better to put a little bit in, and then if you need to add later, mm -hmm. it's easier than... Taking, Taking a little bit out of every single yeah, cupcake. So I've done that one before, it took time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just scraping the last bit off the bowl. 
Angels. Fantastic. Um, adding. So Aisha's seen which one is the least full yeah. and adding the little bit extra she had in there. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so that is stage one. The next bit is we have to pop them in the oven. So that was our oven we'd heated up to 180 or 160 fan. I think Danielle said about 450 Fahrenheit or gas mark four. So just make sure you're careful that when you open the oven door, there will be heat and you coming out. On the bottom shelf instead of the top shelf, because then... The okay, game, that's yeah. it. So I should suggest putting them on the bottom shelf rather than the top shelf, especially if you're not using a uh, fan oven. If you're using yeah. a fan oven, it doesn't matter too much because the yeah. whole oven's the same temperature. So yes. I'm about to be in the kitchen because so they're in the oven for 15 minutes yep so as Aisha said I forgot to read that <laughs> 15 minutes in the oven it says until they're golden brown and the skewer inserted into the middle of each cake comes out clean when I was taught to check cakes I wasn't taught with a skewer I was taught to listen to them and if they were still fizzing they weren't cooked but if they'd stopped making a sound they are fully cooked <laughs> oh wow I didn't know that <laughs> Um, 
if I was to pop this down on the surface and try and knock it over with my hand, and I'm hitting quite hard, it's moving along, but it's not falling over. As there's a really smooth surface in the kitchen, because I've just been got a really smooth, clean kitchen. Um, if I try and lift it up by the bottom, I can move it around, but I can't lift it up. Um, I then take the handle and just lift straight up, and it came up really easily, and I didn't have to worry about it. Um, I'm just going to pour, hopefully without spilling it everywhere, um, the water from my cup in here. So I pour the water from my cup where I made my cup of hot water into my thermos cup. I'm going to pop the lid on and push it all the way down. And I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to pop it sideways. And oh, it had a little bit of a leak. Didn't do a leak last time I did that. I think ours is getting a little bit old. So it held for quite a long time. I held it there for about 10 seconds before it leaked and I'll have to tidy up Aisha's area before she can cook again. <laughs> um, that's the non-spill mug. You use the hand to pick it up, really easy. If you don't, not easy at all. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we have a set of talking scales. It's got a nice large print jug with nice large indicators. The handle's got a nice soft grip handle and the spout has a notch in it, which makes it really easy to pop on the edge of something if you're pouring. So you don't have to worry about holding it in the air and making sure you're getting it in the right place. And then the base unit is like a, a standard set of scales, um, but when you pop the top on, it really fits nice and firmly. It goes all the way down the base unit. It has two buttons on the front. It's got one on the left that says unit on it, and one on the right that says on and tear. If I pop my scales, uh, my jug on the scales, and I turn it on, it tells me the power's turned on, so it says power on. And obviously it's thinking that these scales weigh a little bit, so I am going to press the tear button. Zero. And so now it's saying it's on zero, but we don't want to measure in ounces because that's what, not what we've been measuring in today, so I'm going to press the unit button. Um, we were measuring in grams, but I've only got liquids here and I don't want to use up any of Aisha's ingredients, otherwise she might not make me cakes again. Um. <laughs> Are you sure? Will you make me a cake again if I use some of your sugar? <laughs> so actually, Aisha needs me to measure her for the um, butter icing. We need yeah. to measure some icing sugar. Yeah. So how much icing sugar do we need? We need 300 grams of icing sugar. So we're on grams. There's a slightly different method to measuring here than Aisha did. So Aisha poured and poured and poured and went, yes, I'm right. With talking scales, you have to put some in. 300 grams, I said and then wait for it to tell you how much there is. It is 31 grams. We're going to be here a while. <laughs> it is 61 grams. So if you knew how much, it's going to, oh, that's going to be about 10 spoonfuls. You could do quite a few at once, but I'm just doing one at a time. Sorry, Aisha, I'm causing all sorts of mess. <laughs> Here we are, almost halfway. So this time I'm going to put two spoonfuls in before I let it talk to me. It is 257 grams. Oh, so you only... That says we were better waiting to do one at a time. So I need slightly less than a full spoonful because I've been having about 30 grams per spoon. Is that okay, Aisha? Yes, that's okay, fine. so that's Aisha's told me that you don't have to be yes, perfectly well, accurate, so I'm three grams over and she's happy with that. I'm just going to move the scales off to one side, and then I can bring the 
bowl that I should nicely fell back in. She's going to be mixing in a glass bowl this time rather than a, a pottery bowl she was mixing earlier. And I can just lean the, the tip on the side if it was liquid. Because it's not liquid, it's icing sugar, it will go absolutely everywhere. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pop the jug in the middle and just gently tip so I don't have a massive cloud of icing sugar. Because I really thought about this and I'm wearing a bright green top which means that there'll be icing sugar all over it later. <laughs> so that is the talking scales. It also does do liquids. So it said grams that time. If I press clear, I won't pop it now because my jug's all flowery. Um, I could have done milliliters. So if we were measuring um, milk for an ingredient in something, you can measure milliliters or water. It does that as well. Same idea, you pour a little bit in, wait, pour a little bit in, wait. You can also take out and wait. But it's a slightly different skill to if you've been cooking. Like, oh, she does, just pour it in and wait for the scales to go. <laughs> okay, any more questions? That's from? Brilliant. How much are these? Um... Oh, off the top of my head, I think they are £45. But don't quote me on that one. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I'm going to pop them out of the way. Uh, the last item I've brought into the kitchen is a pen frame. I've got to turn it off. <laughs> so I'm just holding down the, the on off button so I can turn it off, hopefully. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll keep talking to me. It automatically turns itself off. There we are. Okay, the last item I brought is the pen friend. It is a black pen-like object with four um, buttons on it. It's got one very raised button near the top where the speaker grill is, one slightly raised button, and then two fairly flush buttons. I think they're all a slightly different height. Um, and this is very useful for labelling things. So if I turn it on, it will tell me it's turned on. Hold that top very raised button down. So it made a nice beep, which means it's ready for me to do something. So Danielle has labelled everything in the resource centre with a dot, and there's one on the talking scales. So I'm just going to pop the more pointy end of the pen friend onto this dot on the talking scales and see what it tells me. Oh, 
try not to do this. There is a battery compartment and it takes two standard AAA batteries. We've got Duracells in here, but there are other battery manufacturers. Um, it's just standard AAA batteries, batteries you're likely to have at home. So are there any techie questions? <laughs> No, it's, it's just been um, various comments. Okay. Um, I'm asking who's got a pen friend? Mm -hmm. um, there's a bit, bit of a delay. Um, yeah, I said to Daniel, woof woof, we heard your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Anna was asking if you can use it on clothes. Um, and uh, Danielle responded yes and audio books. <laughs> See Danielle's <laughs> answering all my questions for me. <laughs> you can use it on anything, not just in the kitchen. Anna's got a pen friend. Yeah. And a Clement, yeah. It's it's really whatever you want to label. So um, you could make yourself an address book with it, where every person's name and number is a different dot. You could label your CDs so you knew what your CDs were. You could label... Give me an idea and I'll tell you if you can label it. <laughs> um, tin food? Yeah, tin food. We also, there are also talking tin lids that might be more useful for tinned food. But if you've got a pen friend, you can use a pen friend. It comes with magnets which are really good for things like tins. Mm -hmm. um, stickers, we've got little stickers that are about the size of a... a um, a pinky finger nail and bigger stickers which go bigger than your thumbnail. Don't cut them in half because you'll then just have two stickers which do exactly the same. Um, I'm just having a check what else is in my box because I brought the whole box down. <laughs> um, and there are also magnets, I said that didn't I? I think there's yeah. also a key fob you can have as well. Depends whether you get the pen frame 2 or the pen frame 3 and actually every box I have ever seen has had slightly different things inside it. Um, on the outside of mine, I've got four raised dots telling me how to do it. On some people's, it was a card that was inside that they then had to find. Um, but the instructions are, with the pen friend, all you need to do is turn it on. I'm going to turn it back on. And attach it to one of the raised dots on the box. And I have to apologise profusely for the ice and sugar and water I've now put all over her nice clean surface. <laughs> Different. 
So we leave them for another five minutes. Yeah, because we've got a catering oven, it, it has a little yeah. bit of a mind of itself. Yeah, so, so our timings aren't always the same. But so you can always open, just yeah. check it, just to make sure that it's mm -hmm. golden brown. If you're cooking a bigger cake, make sure you leave it at least 20 minutes before you open the oven door yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Um, so, we're just going to have to wait for a little bit more. I'll um, just do my washing up. <laughs> so Aisha's going to do her washing up. Um, talk to us about your chicken stew. Ah, yes. Oh, chicken stew takes time. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so I'm going to pop in a little bit. So our thought for our next cook-along session would be to cook chicken stew with Aisha. So she's going to give us a bit of an idea of what that's going to require. <laughs> well, it depends. Um, the, the chicken stew I cook for Korean Invasion is a little bit different because some people are allergic to mm -hmm. certain ingredients. So I start off with chicken breast. The weight or measurement doesn't really matter, it depends on the quantity that you want. So wash it, I usually wash it with either vinegar. Well, chop the chicken breast to the size that you require. It doesn't have to be in a particular way. So how big do you normally cut it? Ish? Um, a cube size. <laughs> what, what, how big is your cube? Um, <laughs> not too good with measurements. That's okay. Probably. Hold up, hold up and I'll give a guess. Okay, okay. like like this looks that to me about size. the sort of top joint of your thumb yeah like that maybe size. a little bit bigger cubed wise yeah so <laughs> or you can make it smaller or yeah bigger so i usually yeah cut chop the chicken breast in cubes small medium or large and then wash it i usually wash it in vinegar but if you don't have vinegar any vinegar if you don't have it, you can always use um, lemon juice mm -hmm. or lemons, whichever, whatever you have in the house. So wash it, wash it for about um, two or three minutes just to get all the impurity out and drain, drain the water. Season it with, um, I usually use chicken seasoning, oxo, and then mixed herbs. If you don't have the mixed herbs, you can just use thyme or bay leaf. Mm -hmm. those two and then you fry it for about um, 10 minutes just to hold it together because if you don't fry it it's gonna it's not gonna hold together in the, when you're doing the, the gravy so about 10 minutes fry it take it out that's my phone in while we ignore it <laughs> yeah 10 minutes <clears throat> so or until it's brown just a little bit brown so it all depends. And then take it out, just add a little bit of oil. You chop the onions or dice them, whichever way. Add it, put it in the pot, season it with herbs and a little bit of um, seasoning. Any seasoning that you have really. Season to taste really, because everybody's taste is different. Season to taste. And then just leave it about 10, 15 minutes. It depends on the size of the, the gravy that you're making 10 15 minutes 20 minutes just make sure that it's brown soft and then add a little bit of a uh, one tin of chopped tomatoes i always use chopped tomatoes because it's easier but if you have fresh tomatoes that you want to chop you do it but i use tin chopped tomatoes and then leave it to fry for about 15 minutes, keep obviously mixing it so otherwise it stays in the bottom. So you just keep mixing it regularly so it doesn't stay at the bottom. And then tomato puree is optional. So I sometimes use it, depends how red you want it. So it's optional. If you don't want to use it, then after 15, 20 minutes, you add the chicken the chicken breast in the gravy that you've just made. A bit of black pepper is optional as well. And season to taste really. Um, that's about it. So I've got a question. Yeah. Are there any advantages of using fresh or prepared chopped tomatoes? Um, it's just that it's easier. Okay. <laughs> is there any difference in how you'd have to cook them if what? they were fresh? 
against. Oh, not really. Okay. Yeah, because you all dissolve when it's cooking. Yeah. So it doesn't. For me, it's just easier. But if you have, if you want to use the fresh ones, that's fine. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, we just had lots of people saying how much they like your chicken stew. <laughs> yes. Yes. Should we have yeah. another check of the cupcake? Yeah, I think that was about five minutes. Yeah, this, um, and what else that is easy to do for members? Meatball stew. I could. That doesn't take long. You might have to reduce some of your quantities though, because we're not cooking for twenty. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. So yeah, so if. If you cook, say, like 500 grams of chicken breast, 500. Oh, or more than 20. More than 20. <laughs> We're not cooking for more than 20. Yeah. So if you're not cooking for more than 20, so about um, a kilo of chicken breast. <laughs> Is that for the chicken stew? That's the chicken oh, stew. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we're talking about the chicken stew. Your blackbird pie. Mm. <laughs> that would just, yeah. And the bread and butter pudding. Oh, oh. Butter pudding. oh. I know. That's one of the members' favourites. I know. I think everyone's got their favourites. Like, yeah. Yeah. Some people don't like the raisins in the bread and butter pudding, so I do. Um, I just take it out when I'm <laughs> serving. So yes, yeah, yeah. Like and then there's the roast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the roast. We're the talking roast. about the roast yesterday. The potatoes. Oh. Um, <laughs> Natasha was saying, I don't know how you get your roast pork so soft <laughs> <laughs> and roast lamb. So yeah, I gave a few tips. That's how I do it. That's how soft I. If I want it that soft, that's the way I do it. I cover it with foil. So yeah. say like yeah, um, yesterday I did the roast pork, season it, and then I put um, a bit of water in there, probably. Oh, Daniel said trifle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Everyone has their favorites. <laughs> the favorite yeah. is lots of puddings. <clears throat> yeah, everyone has their favorites. Um, so. Anna said meatballs. Yes. Natasha <laughs> said roast pork. <laughs> Mine's blackberry pie. Yeah. I love that blackberry pie. It's lovely. But I mean, amongst other things. Yeah. Well, Most people have like, their favorite. They eat everything, but then they have their favorite. Yeah. yeah. Les was asking about Mother's Day menu. <laughs> oh, Could we I have it another day? Yeah. Yeah. But what's your Mother's Day menu again? Oh, I was. Oh, um, it was Mother's Day menu. Okay, it was gonna be. It was gonna be um roast beef. Uh, yes, oh, roast beef. beef. And then oh. we we're going to do the Easter menu was roast lamb, leg of oh. lamb because of the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So yes. I was looking forward to cooking that, but <laughs> it was a shame. Yeah. It we'll have it. It didn't happen. We will do. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Do we need to look at the cakes? Yeah. <laughs> They're still a little bit pale. Hang on. Yeah, it's 180. This open is like, I'll give you another three more minutes, maybe. Yeah, three more minutes. So, any more suggestions for what we can cook next time? They're all suggestions of what Aisha cooks best. <laughs> Where is your suggestions of what we can cook? <laughs> of what we can cook together, things that you think might be um, sort of half an hour to an hour's worth of cooking. Yeah, say an hour. An hour. With, with a little break in the between. We, yeah, we just so we can do something else. Yeah. If if I'm doing meatball stew, for example, I have to. It will take. Yeah, probably an hour because then okay. I have to do the board myself. 
So that takes time. Oh, that's the answer to why your meatball stew is so good. The <laughs> handmade meatballs. Yes, so I do that myself. Season it with beef seasoning. Whatever seasoning I have really. <laughs> but yeah, and then put the mix hubs. So I remember, Natalia <laughs> said plantain. <laughs> I remember on the Talking News, yeah. you were talking about what you thought your um, key ingredients, store key ingredients. ingredients. So just remind well, us what they mixed were. Mixed herbs. You mixed can herbs. never go wrong with that. I think we said three mm. things. So mixed, mixed herbs. herbs, thyme and bay leaf. Okay. So Those are the three ingredients that I must have in my cupboard. And obviously chicken seasoning because I use more of chicken, any chicken seasoning really. Yeah. So you've heard that from Aisha. If you've got mixed herbs, thyme and bay leaf, you yeah. can cook anything. Anything. <laughs> the black pepper is just an optional. If you don't have it, that's fine. But those three ingredients, they're my magic. <laughs> <laughs> my magic one. That's why whenever the members come in, oh, I love this smell coming out from your kitchen I said I'm cooking mixed herbs in there <laughs> but not everything has mixed herbs mixed herbs it depends on what I'm cooking but like my chicken stew meatball stew all my stews have that ingredient yeah so so when we decorated our cupcakes we realized we, we thought we better put some stuff on them to make them look, look, look a little bit more interesting and we found raspberries and chocolate buttons what would be your choice of things to pop on to your cupcakes mm. and we can't just say chocolate be a little bit more <laughs> descriptive than that Full process now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Danielle says, Do you have any tips? Well, she says, Getting the leaf out again is awkward. What's your tips for getting the bay leaf out of what you're cooking? Um, I just um, take a fork, yeah, or a big spoon to get, to get the bay leaf out. Yeah. So, could you put it in, in a um, Bag. bag. Sorry, I'm, I'm yeah, making. I'm making. Yeah, 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 I know. I know. That. I just don't know. I know the one you're talking. Yeah, yeah, you can put it in there. I think you can get herb bags. Herb bag, yes. And you can pop all your herbs in and put it in, it. and then it's a bigger yeah. thing that you can fish out. That might make it easier. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. We got some very healthy people. People wanted strawberries. We went to try and buy some strawberries, and they were out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I said strawberries. Oh, Danielle, strawberries. And um, Bob, um, Anna and Danielle both strawberries. Bob, rainbow drops. Are they those puffed um, rice multicolored balls, Bob? I don't know. Anna, Anna, Anna Clement said chocolate flakes. I was just washing up a few bits so she can make the buttercream in a moment. <laughs> So she hasn't just been, oh, glacé cherries, yes, they are very nice. I do like glacé cherry. Alright. I like glacé cherries in my cupcakes as well. So this was a nice basic vanilla cupcake recipe. You could have put ingredients in, so you could put uh, chocolate buttons, um, mixed fruit, so you could put raisins, sultanas. You could put your glacé cherries in, but you need to make sure you chop them up. Probably quite small because they're very dainty little fairy cakes. Um, if you ever cook with blueberries, fresh blueberries, be aware that your cakes will change colour. They will not look um, the normal colour with just the blueberry in them. They will go purple or blue. But they do taste really nice. Oh, they do. Yes. Right, I think we're going to get the... Do you know where we could get herb bags? Danielle's Um oh, My I'm guess thinking. would be Amazon for herb, herb bags. But uh, I think I used to be able to find them in Lakeland, but I haven't seen them recently. Is going to be my answer. Mm. I think yeah. they're I think they're made of muslin, the the really traditional ones. Yeah, yeah. 
Amazon has it. Uh, Susan, it's done a little bit of searching and Amazon have her bags. Yeah. <laughs> but they do come from other places as well. <laughs> so I was just getting my bowl ready. Yeah, I was just making sure everything's ready so she can do her buttercream. Ah, that's what you mean. The, the white chocolate buttons with the sprinkles on, Bob. That makes sense. Multicoloured uh, sugar strands. Oh, <laughs> your all of your education wow. us with the sweets that, that you like to eat. We <laughs> yeah. ah. the cake out now. Okay, it's so ready. the so cakes ready. look nice and golden brown oh, now. Brown does oh, get and smells good. good. It does smell amazing. Very hot. Yeah, and remember, if you are checking by listening, just be careful not to get your ear too close. I, I have had a few burnt ears over the years. <laughs> There we are. They look beautiful, Aisha. They're all even. I'm so jealous. I never have my cupcakes looking that even. <laughs> I'll have one very big one and one very tiny one. So I know where I'm getting cupcakes from in future. It'll be Aisha. She's far too good at this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to use a probe. Yeah. Or you can use um, a fork just so you... Yeah, in the so middle. anything that's thin, thin and pointy, so you can use a cocktail stick, but yes, something anything. metal is better because it yeah, sticks so less. It sticks, I, yeah, so I'm just going to use that just to check that it's evenly cooked. And you always pop it into the middle of a cake the rather than the edge because the middle takes longer to cook. Yeah. So I should have popped it in so there. it's clean. She pulled it out and it's clean. If you need to check, you can use your fingers, fingers but yeah. it will be very hot because it's just come out of the oven. <laughs> so I'm just checking each and every one of them, but once you've checked one, really, yeah, should be. It's all clean. If you've got one that's far bigger than the others. Oh, the smell <laughs> of the cake. <laughs> If you have one cake that's much, much bigger than the others, that's the one you should always check. Yeah. So, just check in each and every one. Brilliant. Once the first one is clean, basically, they're the same size. <laughs> should be okay. That's it. Well done. And this, we've just seen why we always have butter icing on top of cupcakes. They've all got a hole in them. <laughs> so now, we're going to take them out to put them on a metal rack. So if you've got a cooling rack, you just have to gently lift them out. So the tray's now been out of the oven long enough that you can be careful it's with it. It's hot. I can do it because my hands are different. I've been touching the oven all the time, so I just use my hands. So just take it, I've washed them already, they're clean. So I'll just put them there, just to cool. <laughs> So just, I was just lifting them up very gently with the very top of the cupcake. If you found you've accidentally put two cupcake cases in, don't worry about don't that, worry. it happens. I did that before. <laughs> and she's making sure they're all nice and spread out so they got time, uh, they got um, room for the air to move around them and cool them down nice and quickly. Because if you pop the buttercream on whilst they're still hot, It'll it will melt. just melt off and it won't be as pretty. It will still taste nice, it just yeah. won't be as pretty. <laughs> So, that's the food. So normally you'd pick up the case, the tray with some oven gloves and pop it in the sink. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I should be just pick up I really hot things. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm going to put it on one side. I'm just going to move it over there and then I'll come and do the yeah. So I should just moving her cupcakes off to one side so they're not in the way when she's trying to make her buttercream up. So I'm just going to go and locate my recipe so I can read the next step. Next step, yeah. So it says, right, so we've done the um, pop a skewer into the middle and check that they come out clean and we've left them to cool. Well, we've popped them off on the side to cool. Yeah. So it says we need to whisk 150 grams of butter that I'm just going to need to measure. 
with the 300 grams of icing sugar that I measured earlier. Yeah, already measured that. Thank you for that. <laughs> That's okay. And we're going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla extract just to make sure it tastes more vanilla-y and less buttery. Put my hand whisk on again. Just so I just washed the beaters up from earlier and you're just inserting them in. You need to make sure you've got clean beaters for this because yeah. um, icing sugar is nice and messy. <laughs> yeah, that's done. Got my hand whisk. Just turn it over. Now, so. So that's a good tip from Aisha. She didn't tell us she did it. Yeah. She made sure that when she popped the beaters into her um, hand whisk, the hand whisk was off at the wall, yeah. so it didn't accidentally yeah, start I spinning and hurt herself. Yeah, you sometimes just press it by accident, so I always turn it off. Right, so now I'm going to measure the butter. And as, as we did with our cake, I will say we're cheating and using margarine. Yeah. Uh, uh, every time I cook, I cook with margarine because it's easier because it's already softer. Um, you can use butter. Uh, and there was a merry berry trick she said a couple of Christmases ago. If you cut it into nice cubes mm. and pop it in the water, in water in a microwave for I think it's about ten seconds, mm. it softens it enough to use it. Okay. <laughs> now the butter is 150. Yeah, 150 grams of butter. Are your scales on? I didn't hear them go on. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I know I was going to do that. I was listening it's, to your beat. Yeah, the scale is on. So. So I was just using the last of the flora the from flora. her, uh, sorry, margarine, let's not so do brands. Nice and, yeah, it's so all nice and soft because it's been out for a while now, so it's going to be easy. Um, yeah, so if you don't have enough in your pot, remember you can always get a second pot out, which is what I just done here. Yeah. This one's also nice and soft. Soft, yes, yeah, 150. Oh, I got it! 100. Fantastic! Wow! That's always <laughs> such a brilliant feeling when you get the exact amount first time. Yes, wow! Yeah, so I'm just popping it into the bowl, the mixing bowl. So do you soften your butter by whisking first before popping your ice and sugar in? Um, well, because it's already softened, but I still okay. have to whisk it yeah. to make it lighter. Yeah. And, and just really the best tip I think Aisha's given us all is tidy up as you go along oh yeah, because then you know always. where everything is. <laughs> Put this aside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, so I'm just going to start whisking now. So you're whisking on that nice slow speed again? Slow speed, Okay, yeah. so Aisha's just going to whisk the butter before we add anything else to make sure it's really soft and smooth. Mm. Yes. So again, you can do this by hand, it just takes a lot more elbow grease. <laughs> so I'm just moving the whisk around as she did earlier, not keeping it still to make sure that she gets everything. I'm sure in a moment she'll stop and scrape it off the sides. Increasing the speed now. Okay, so you increase the speed up to a medium speed, not going near that high speed one. And again, making sure you move the whisk around rather than keeping it still. Oh, I'm going up to the next speed up. Okay. I've only got three speeds on mine, I don't think I'd go up to the top. <laughs> I'm just keeping moving and moving and moving. I'm going to put everything in the middle. There we are. So we're just, yep, yeah, scooping everything from the edge back to the middle. Anyone would think you'd cooked before, Aisha. <laughs> I'm the cook. I know. So that's I'll just whisk it a little bit more. So it did I'm it make did it again go? Speed now. Ah, I'm so you're gonna increase the speed a little bit, yeah. 
Did it feel s softer when you were trying to push through it towards the end? Yes. Okay, so, so now nice. you know that it's getting softer when you when you whisk it becomes lighter. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's it's really really soft now, and it's not really really hot in the kitchen. Honest. No. <laughs> right. I'm gonna increase this speed now. So much, much softer when you're trying to push the whisk through it. And it's formed lots of little peaks. So the next ingredient is the icing sugar, the 300 grams of icing sugar and the teaspoon of vanilla extract. So would that be the order in which you'd add it or would you add your so liquid ingredient first and I'll, then your icing I'll sugar? I'll do the liquid ingredient first, okay. the um, vanilla. vanilla extract and the milk. Because there's milk. Uh, yeah, you can add a... Yeah. So you add a dash of milk, that makes it sort of soak into the cupcakes a bit more, mm. make sure your cupcakes are nice and moist. Mm. So it's just a little bit of, um, it's twice as much vanilla as we had in the cakes. Yeah, That's to try and get rid of some of that buttery flavour. One teaspoon. Yeah. That's it. And then I'm going to put three tablespoons of milk. Okay. So, as Aisha said, it, even though in the instructions it said add your dry ingredients then your wet ingredients, then the rest of the wet ingredients, it's a lot easier to add all your wet ingredients and then put the icing sugar in. It means that they are all just nice and soft together. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Sorry. Bob, Bob wonders if he can lick the bowl, but I don't think we can get it to him. <laughs> Bob, you're welcome. And, and for health and safety so reasons, I am going to say you should never eat raw cake mix <laughs> because it is actually bad for you because of the flour. <laughs> so I'm going to mix. I'm just going to wash my hands. So yeah, Aisha added the little dash of milk. I think it was, was it three? Three tablespoons. Three tablespoons? Yeah. Right. Um, and that's just to make sure it's a nice uh, moist consistency. Uh, this isn't a piping butter icing, it's a spooning butter, butter icing. If you're piping it, you probably wouldn't add the milk. Okay, so Aisha's about to whisk again, it's gonna get loud. <laughs> So again, as we all time before, she's moving the whisk around while she's whisking, rather than keeping it in one place. There we are. Right, so I'm going to add the icing sugar, but I'm going to add um, what is it, half at a time, yeah? Yeah. So that will, because it's, otherwise it, it will go all over my face. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so icing, icing sugar does have that knack, it just yeah. goes so everywhere. So half first, we've got 300 grams in here that um, Catherine measured earlier. So I'll just do half of this, using and this spoon. It's an approximate half, not an exact no, half. Exactly. So don't worry about <laughs> measuring out 150 grams yes, twice. So I'll just do this half first. Okay. And then so I should use a spoon to scoop it out of the bowl and there was a little puff of icing sugar but there always will be. She's now scooping down from the side of the bowl again yeah. back into the middle. And uh, you start And using the spoon to skip the... <laughs> and uh, we're going to start off with a really, really slow, slow speed. speed. Which is one. And there's a little 
cloud of icing sugar, but that will always happen. I just not allowed to breathe in now because you get a very sweet breath in. Okay, so she did about half of it, and she's going to scoop in from the sides to the middle to make sure we haven't got all that stuff creeping up the sides of the bowl. Because if we don't have that, we don't have all the ingredients being mixed up. And then I'll just add the half. So, oh, she's using a spoon again, well, just to get the last bits out because the rest of it she tipped in. Yeah, I don't like wasting my ingredients. <laughs> And I'm, are we using the same low speed again? Yes. Yeah, so nice low speed again. Low speed again. <laughs> and yet yeah, little clouds of icing sugar again, but really don't worry about that. It, it's, it's what happens. And I measured a little bit too much anyway. <laughs> So we're making sure here all the icing sugar is mixed in with the um, butter. Is there a change in texture as you mix it? Does it get as more stiff? It, yeah, it becomes lighter as well because of the sugar. So when, you start, when you first put the sugar in, obviously it's a bit heavy. So as it's mixing with the butter, it becomes lighter. Okay, so Aisha yeah. says, but when you start off with all the icing sugar in it, it feels like it's quite heavy. And then as you mix it in, it becomes lighter again when it's all mixed mm -hmm. together. She's just scooped off from the sides and moved it into the middle. middle. And then is scraping off the excess mixture from her spatula with a spoon. And she is going to whisk again on a nice low speed. Same speed, right? Yeah. yeah. And there was no poof of icing sugar this time, so we must all be... Um, Nearly mixed in. on your beaters yeah. um, and it's, um, it? it's an almost white colour rather than the, the buttery oh, yellow colour yeah. um, it. and it's quite a soft buttercream as I said it's, it's not a nice firm one you wouldn't want to try and pop it into a piping bag because I don't think it would pipe very well right I think that's done so. okay so I am going to Move these beautiful cupcakes out of the way so you've got enough room. I promise I won't eat one, honest. <laughs> so we can do the next stage, which hopefully our cakes are now cool enough. Uh, yeah, it should be okay. I was taking off the... Yeah, so I just took off the beaters and then tapped them gently you know, against the, the sides of the bowl to get the excess off. And yeah. um, she's got nice thin white icing sugar there. Yeah, to get the excess off. Um, she's got nice thin wire beaters rather than the thicker ones that come with quite a lot of kitchen, um, kitchen mixers. That probably makes it a little easier. And she's tidying up as she goes along because that's always a really good idea. <laughs> just making sure her work surface is clear. Icing off. Yep. Because the icing sugar went everywhere yeah, as yeah. it had, it is prone to do. <laughs> right. So, is it ready for taste? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. We've, we've got to ice them yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is true vapor. We're doing a taste. <laughs> yeah. 
What's that lady's name? name? Margaret. My Mary Berry. Mary Berry. I'm not Mary Berry. But I was so Aisha was... has just brought her cakes over from the side. Um, do you want to just have a quick te- check? They are cool enough to ice. Fingers. Yeah. 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 So just if you can touch them with your fingers, then yeah. and they're not hot, they'll be cool enough to ice. Um, do you want to get your platter out? Uh, the platter. Yeah. Okay. I'll go. I'll go get the platter. I'm just just getting something to pop the cakes onto so that we can give them to people who are up in the office. Um, Bob said to me, "Can you arrange a minion bus? I'd like to try one." Yes. I have a feeling we can. Is that the cake for Father's Day? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> we're not quite there yet, Glenn. <laughs> I think this means, oh, actually, we're going to have to do cupcakes again. Cupcakes, yeah. <laughs> when when so. everyone back in. So Aisha's just gone to get a nice tray out to pop them on. Right. Um, and she's going to use a spoon. Do you use a spoon? No, I'm using a spoon. spatula. Sorry, yeah. spatula to ice the cakes. So it is about how much are you popping on? Um, just. I'd say if you're using a spoon, it's a good ta- uh, dessert spoonful, and just sort of gently putting it on top, not worrying too much how. How it looks, because we're going for it for the rustic look rather than the beautifully piped look. Yeah. But they still look scrummy, and I just making sure she is icing all the way down to the edge of the cupcake case. You can do that. It's up to you. This is optional icing. It's your cake. Yep. Yeah, so we're going to make sure we ice them all first, and we're just going to ice enough to pop on the tray rather than all of them, and then we're going to decorate with our raspberries and chocolate buttons. Yeah. So. <clears throat> oh, looks yummy. <laughs> Might even get Aisha to try one of these. <laughs> I'm a good volunteer. Yeah, I need a volunteer. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a very, very moist buttercream by the looks of it. It's nice and soft um, rather than some which look very, very hard. <laughs> Almost there. Yeah, and it's just scooping that buttercream on and spreading it all over the top. If you did want to try piping it, you could. Um, yeah, just leave out the milk. Yeah, just definitely leave out the milk. Um, Very contrasting plates. No, we don't have very many non white plates, unfortunately. <laughs> Once we've popped the nice um, decoration on the top, it'll look better. So, you could have, when we added the vanilla extract, if you didn't want to have white icing, you could have popped in any food colouring. Yeah, uh, you could have purple that. cakes, any, pink any cakes, color. green cakes, blue cakes. <laughs> and another tip that that's just me because um, I like, like lemon flavour. So you, instead, if you don't want the colouring, you could put some lemon juice yeah, that'll in be it. Nice. It will bring out the flavour really <laughs> nice. Yeah. Lemon juice, fresh lemon. So when you're cooking these, what colours are your go- yours going to be? That's my question. Cool. <laughs> Glenn says, could you please post a cupcake to me? <laughs> Bob says, sinking my teeth in, sucking at the icing. Mmm, sweet. <laughs> So, so what colour would you choose your cupcakes to be? Is going to be my question. Oh yeah. To, to those watching. <laughs> mm. We don't have any food colouring here, which is why ours are white. <laughs> so, did yeah, do two more. Yeah. <laughs> Pink, Glen. <laughs> that because that's the only food colouring you've got. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I'm just going to do two more because that will make it a yeah. display. And then we're going to decorate and we will put some raspberries and some chocolate buttons on. 
We're just being very minimalist with one raspberry or one chocolate button. We, we did have one with both on, but um, but it's up to you as much decoration as you want. Hmm? Yeah, you could put in a little bit of cocoa powder if you wanted, yeah, and you could make you a chocolate would, icing. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever really you want. So, so let's see. Okay. So I just move this away. So I should just move the other cupcakes away so they're out of the way, yeah. and she's wash gonna wash her hands because <laughs> they got a little bit icingy. You will get messy when you're icing cakes. It's <laughs> part of the fun. Yeah. Um, and, oh, Aisha's being experimental. She's putting two raspberries on these ones. Yes. A bit more healthy oh. than our previous ones. I can't wait to try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm, I'm pop some chocolate <laughs> So we're standing our buttons up in the icing. You could lay them down on top. It now looks like it's got... If anyone used to make butterfly cakes, where you cut the top off your fairy cake, so you have to have a nice peak, the um, chocolate butter ones look like they're butterfly cakes with the wings sticking out with the buttons. Oh, maybe we should, we should just do cupcakes and we'll make different cupcakes. We can make top hats or butterfly cakes next time. <laughs> Oh, those raspberries do look scrummy. <laughs> oh, so we've got to take a picture first before right. anyone has a taste test. Um, I just put two raspberries on three of them, two chocolate buttons on three of them, and on the last one she put two raspberries and two two chocolate buttons. Yeah. What? <laughs> what a treat, eh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so just we're gonna pause for a moment while we have a photo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> decorations you've put on. Um, you could do, if, if, if you don't have the facilities to cook, there's always the option of doing a little bit of a cheat and buying some cupcakes and just doing the <laughs> decorating of them, because you don't need any um, oven for doing that. <laughs> yeah. And Glenn is saying when this is all over he'd like to help 
mixed up in the kitchens. I think he just wants some cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> because you are so the board then. <laughs> and he we... said to me, please remember a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. <laughs> And lots of people said they'd go, they would have gone for the chocolate button ones rather than the raspberry ones. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, I think if we'd nice. had strawberries, the answer might have been different, but we just couldn't get hold of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is our cupcakes. I hope you had fun with us. Um, we'll and see you next time. And we're cooking <laughs> chicken stew, maybe. Unless you have any other ideas. So are there any more questions you have about what we've done today? Any more tips you'd like or anything else like that? We'll give you a little bit of time to type back to us. Um, I would like to make a compliment. <laughs> There will also be a nice fun quiz. It's going to be just a bit of fun, nothing really serious. We're not going to be marking it, but we will be giving you the answers. So do join us again next week. The event will be up later on this afternoon. And thank you for being here today. And thank you for watching. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Catherine. Well done. <laughs> <laughs>